and I am so excited to share with you my mother's traditional latke recipe. Now in the spirit of the staying at home movement, hopefully this special recipe from my mother will inspire you to cook for your family. I also wanted to give a very special thank you to idlers in Paso Robles and especially Jennifer Idler, who really encouraged me to do this for everybody and hopefully you're going to love them. I should know my sh kids sure do. Let's start with the tools and ingredients you're going to need. Uh, before my husband got me this fantastic fruit processor, I used a cheese grater and I used the shoestring attachment. The shoestring attachment is simply the largest shredding um, width, I guess, on a grater and you're gonna earn your war wounds by using this. Definitely makes fantastic latkes. Or you can use your Cuisinart and just put the giant um, grater, the cheese grater, giant grater shoestring attachment on your Cuisinart. Uh, I like to use metal spoons. I'll tell you why in a second. Um, not metal spoons, excuse me, metal spatulas. And then this just to kind of scrape the insides of the bowls. Very important, a cheesecloth or any kind of terry cloth that is porous because you're going to squeeze the moisture out of the potato mixture and you're going to want the water to pass through and I'll show you what that means in a second. My Hungarian Jewish mother always used a cast iron pan for frying her fried chicken and especially her lot because I feel cast iron conducts heat very well and also evenly distributes the heat and I have better control of the lot because and the metal again when you scrape against this it'll it makes it makes it a little easier and obviously a big bowl to put everything in but I'm sure you have that at home. So ingredients, very simple. We're gonna use canola oil for frying. You can also use olive oil, but my most favorite, I don't have it here, is schmaltz, which is basically, you can use chicken fat or duck fat. Usually when I make um, a roasted chicken, I'll save some of the grease and I can use that to fry with. I don't have it this time. So canola oil, canola oil will do. Canola oil is great because it, ha it maintains its integrity on very high heat and it won't smoke off and give a really rancid smell or taste. Olive oil does not have that high of a heating point, but it's still acceptable if you don't have other oils. Salt and peppers, potato love salt and pepper, excuse me, potatoes love salt. So I love salt. You can never over salt a potato as far as I'm concerned. About four medium sized potatoes or five small potatoes. I consider these small potatoes. Um, I have already peeled them and I keep them soaked in some ice cold water to prevent them from browning. Um, yellow onions, yellow sweet onions. Don't use red onions. Um, I wouldn't use the Walla Walla. I like these onions. They're, they have a good oniony taste. Like, I don't know what you would think of when you eat a hash brown, that yummy onion taste. I just used one onion for this. Um, you can definitely double the recipe and one or two eggs and I'm gonna show you what the consistency means by how I want it to feel. Um, I'm a celiac, so I have to keep everything gluten-free in my house. So I, you can either use all-purpose gluten-free flour or rice flour or matzo meal. I think I'm going to try um, just using my traditional gluten-free fl flour today. Right, so but step one, I always like to prime my pan. That's something my mother always did. Not everybody does that. I'm kind of following in her footsteps. She always believed in um, prepping the pan. So I'm getting my pan heated up. I'm not going to do it to the full heat right now. I'm going to do it about maybe a three and I'll throw it on full blast right as I'm getting ready to fry. But I'm going to take the canola oil in here and I'm going to fill my pan up about, let's see, That's about good. It's about a good half inch deep. And then I'm going to start grating. All right, let's start. Turn on my Cuisinart. <clears throat> I'm going to start with my potatoes. And again, these are russet potatoes. Russet potatoes work the best. Don't use anything else, especially red. They have a good starch content and they're going to crisp up really nicely. All right, pretty easy. So we're just going to start that. All right, so I just finished grating everything. I'm gonna open this up, hold the top, otherwise this thing flies off as we've learned in the past. I'm just gonna pop up my attachment and you can see this is the, the attachment I'm using for the Cuisinart. 
It's there. And here's my mixture. So this is probably the most important part of the whole latke making process. If I were to just use these um, shredded shreddings, I would get an entirely soggy latke. Everyone always asks me, how do you get your latke so crispy? Because of this. There's water in potatoes and especially in onions. We're going to want to squeeze everything out. And we want to do this fairly quickly because onions and potatoes are gonna, it's gonna brown quite, quite, quite fast. So let's get as much as we can in here. And again, a cheesecloth, and you're gonna see why I like the cheesecloth. And we're just gonna kinda tie it like a piece of candy and squeeze. You see all of that moisture passing through the terry cloth. So here, everything, the onions and the potatoes are squeezed out. See, if I were to squeeze them, there's no water coming out. As I did earlier, they're nice and dry and airy. Egg, I always crack on, on the um, counter just in case. I don't want to crack it here so I can't pull out shelves, which I already did. Um, let's see how that looks. I'll do it with the mixture. We have salt, pepper over here and gluten-free flour. So about two tablespoons a flour to hold it together. Again, we're using gluten-free flour. Two tablespoons flour. Let's mix everything together. You don't, no need to pre-beat the egg. You're gonna kinda do this. And what I'm looking for is a special texture that's not really like Play-Doh, but that will take form. So this, this would pass. I mean, I guess you could make a patty out of this, but see how it's still kinda falling apart? Let's add another egg. So we have this ready to go. Let's see, let's check our oil. So I kind of make these size, I flatten them out and I always put them down. And remember when you put a latke down, don't throw it in because the oil, oil will splash back at you. And when you fry, you want to place it down and place it away from you. So I'll show you how I do that. Place one side down and away. Or avoid black splash. So another um, great re reason to um, squeeze all the moisture out is so we don't get any um, water that'll react to the oil and spritz out of the pan. You don't want that. So I fry about three minutes each side. So I think they look about ready to flip. I'm seeing them brown on the outside really well. So let's, let's give this one a flip to see. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Now that's what you want them to look like. Oh wow, gorgeous. Now you're not deep frying them, so you can definitely use a little less oil than this, but why? You're coming this far anyway, right? All right, another three minutes. All right, they look about ready to me. Let's flip it over. Ooh, that looks good. Those look delicious, ready, nice and crispy. Ooh, perfect color. Of course, there they are. Beautiful, I want you to see what they should look like. And I have a high tolerance to heat. I don't recommend people pulling them out, but there are traditional latkes. So we have our latkes all done here. I'm gonna introduce you to two very special people. First, this is my husband, Brian. And um, this is our lovely daughter, Ava. Ava, hi. say hi. So Ava, what do you love about latkes? Um, I like it that, I like it about that. What that part? The crispy? The crispy? Do you like that they're crispy? This part. All right, do you want to taste the first latke? Yeah. All right. All right. Which one do you want? So traditionally, we saw serve latkes with applesauce and sour cream. And that is... And, and ketchup. Sometimes you can serve it with, God forbid, ketchup. My uh, daughter likes it. <laughs> so we're going to do it. So no, if... I would like to try the ketchup. Oh, you have never done it with ketchup before? No, ever. Oh, ever. Okay, right, well, you have to go, go ahead and try the first latke. This is the one I was Oh, wow, that's wow. a good one. Go ahead. Hey, Mike. All right. All right, come on, give I it a shot. What do you want, ketchup? ketchup? Mm -hmm. Do you mind with applesauce? There's the first bite. Applesauce and sour mm -hmm. cream. I'm a traditionalist. Yeah, me too. Very good with ketchup. Mommy, let's mm. try with ketchup. Mmm. 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 Mm. Once again, there's nothing made on this planet that my wife doesn't do better. Fantastic. What do you think of the latkes, Eva? 
fantastic. Whoa, and she's a hard judge, isn't she, Brian? She's hard to please. Yep. She's had latkes before and said, mm -mm, I don't think so. Mm -mm. Mm. Crispy, perfect. It's the perfect amount of crunch and just a little bit of fluffiness on the inside. Yeah, very fluffy on the now inside. Now mixing them all three together. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's oh. a perfect latke. This one? They're all perfect. Oh, I can hear the crunch. Mm -hmm. Can you guys hear the crunch? Mm. So, the best thing to pair with a latke is champagne, a nice dry champagne. I think my husband and I are gonna go ahead and open one. What do you think? Okay. Night, night. Good night, everybody.